What do you do if you're going to need your labs done here in Mexico? We're going to show you coming up next. So as you may have seen from one of our previous videos, one that I did, I was having issues with my legs and my ankles and my feet swelling up. And it had been a little over a year since Mark and I both had our last annual physical. So we are walking to the laboratory here in Progresso to get our annual labs done. Thought we'd take you along so you could see what that's like. I did a search on Google for medical laboratories in Progresso. I went with Biomedicos because they have several branches in the Merida area and one that was just walking distance from our current Airbnb. Analysis Clinicos to see what sort of clinical analysis testing they have available on site. As you can see from this page here, we have molecular biology, hematology, immunology, urinalysis, clinical chemistry, and microbiology. There are also specialized tests available as you go down through here for genetics testing and allergy testing, drug testing, therapeutic drug testing, drugs of abuse testing, all these things. I'm going to select hematology because I'm interested in having uh, for certain a complete blood count done and I translate this page in English. But if you select the test again, what it does is it loads the page specific to that test and it's back in Spanish again. So you will have to translate to English again if you don't speak medical Spanish. What I really like about this is it does give you the basic information that you would need to know for what the test is called, the alternate names it has, what type of specimen you, they're going to collect, what it's measuring how much they're going to draw and how long it takes to get the test performed and resulted. Does it require fasting? I mean, that's important for some tests. Not for a CBC, but for some of the chemistry tests, like a fasting glucose, that's important. So you're also able to just click again on the section that you want. I went to the basically the chemistry testing. Um, I decided I'm just going to type in the name of what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a CMP. That is a complete metabolic panel. Just pulling up only that test. And if I click it, which I don't really need to at this point because I'm on the page. So now the tests are being listed in Spanish and I'm going to translate them to English so I can better understand. Uh, so we have, you know, glucose, urea, creatinine, total bilirubin, total proteins, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mostly what this is is a combination of a basic metabolic panel and a liver function panel. This is a pretty basic annual physical type order, a complete metabolic panel. It's interesting to note that they include urea. Urea is not typically included in testing in the United States. They will rely on blood urea nitrogen which is essentially the very last test listed, urea nitrogen. We have some information here regarding the testing, such as what sort of tube are they going to collect? Gold, red, it's fine. How much specimen do they need? How long is it going to take to process this order and get results back? Also, down at the bottom, this is where the fasting comes in. That's important, especially if you're doing glucose testing, because normal glucose levels on a report are always based on a fasting specimen. I am curious to know, however, how long do you fast for a lipid panel? So I typed in lipid. I'm looking to see which one of these is what is probably a lipid panel. I don't think it's total lipids. I think it's going to be lipid profile, HDL cholesterol and triglycerides. I think that's the one. So let's look at HDL cholesterol and triglycerides. Let's tr translate that into English. All right, so this is where our HDL, LDL, uh, basically the 
cholesterol HDL ratio, the LDL HDL ratio. I'm not really sure where the VLDL is, but it might be translating different. Maybe that's what that authorgenic index thing is. I'm not sure, but I can figure it out by calculation if I have to. And no, eight to 12 hours is a fast for this. Typically in the United States, they want you to have a 12, 12 to 16 hour fast for a lipid. So I really wasn't seeing prices. Um, I was trying to figure out what each of these things cost, but I saw promociones. So I went there and well, what do you know? There's some prices for some of these packages. The Checkup Plus is 1,200 pesos. So that sounds good to me. Looks like we get a CBC and chemistries, 32 elements it says, and a urinalysis. We were both very pleased with the waiting area, the lab facility, and the staff. We each paid 1,200 pesos to have a checkup plus performed. She asked for our phone numbers and our email addresses so they could send to us the laboratory report. And a lot of places in Mexico will have you purchase your urinalysis cups at a pharmacia, but they provide urinalysis cups here. It's included as part of the package. So now I'm gonna get my blood work drawn. And uh, I'm expecting this phlebotomy chair like you see in all the really cold, sterile laboratory environments. <laughs> see? See? Because we are gringos. <laughs> Anyway, there's this big comfy chair right here. Big comfy chair. And I have giant veins, so this will be easy. Woo. Okay. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> Good day. <laughs> If you're squeamish, look away. No, I comida nada. No. No, no, no food. Fasting. No, no alcohol. Nope. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's fun. That's a nice term. It's Gina Anderson. Gina Anderson. Didn't even hurt. Okay. And that's it. Sí. Uh, no. 
There were two things that I noticed about this encounter in the laboratory. Number one, they are not using disposable tourniquets. And number two, they are not using flip top guards on the used needles. Both of these things are things that have been adopted pretty universally throughout the United States, but at a cost because it does cost more to throw away every tourniquet after single use. And it does cost more to buy a box of 22 gauged or 18 gauge needles that have a flip up guard on them to protect you from needle stick injuries. Uh, I don't believe it's a requirement to have either, but a lot of places in the US have chosen to go that route, mostly to protect cross contamination between patients and to protect staff from getting needle stick injuries when they go to discard a used needle. Oh. So I noticed, um, I've seen videos like in Huatulco, for example, you gotta go buy your urine cup at a pharmacy. But they gave us our urine cups here. Here they are. We gotta bring them back tomorrow. Gave us labels for them and everything. So there's our lab experience. What you make there? Very easy. Hardest part was the Spanish. <laughs> Just saying. It, was, it wasn't that hard because she was no. semi-bilingual, about, about as bilingual as we are. Between us, yep. made it all work. I'm gonna bet that she's got a small, like uh, ambulatory type lab setting in the back room. Probably. She probably can do urinalysis. She probably can even do a quick CBC or electrolytes. She probably could do a hemoglobin A1C or a glycosylated hemoglobin, things like that. Because they do make ambulatory point of care type instruments that can handle those things pretty easily. Hey guys, so hey, update. Um, and yeah, I got some sun today and we got massages on the beach. So my hair is all full of massage oil. What a horrible thing I have to endure, right? Mm -hmm. But it is now, what? It's three o'clock in the afternoon. We were at the lab this morning at 7.30ish, I wanna say. And our results are back. They email them in PDF format. It is in Spanish. And if you are not used to reading your lab results, you're gonna to have to understand what you're looking at, not just because it's in Spanish, but also because you have to understand your results. And so I was wondering, what are the 32 tests? Okay, well, from what I can see here, they did a complete CBC. It included white count, red count, hemoglobin. They did the MCV, mean corpuscular hemoglobin, um, various indices that are measurements of all those values, platelets, and then they have the total white count and the breakdown of the type of white cells there are, neutrophils, you know, lymphocytes, monocytes, blasts, if they, if they exist, which they don't, they shouldn't, you shouldn't have blasts. Blasts are a bad thing. Um, ESNFLs, all that. So that's the whole CBC part. And, and then there's a normal platelets. Uh, he has a mild anisocytosis and a mild macrocytosis. So macrocytosis is when your red cells are larger than average. I tend to have a microcytosis where they're smaller than average. People with microcytosis often have microcytosis because maybe of an iron deficiency. Whereas macrocytosis is often due to a vitamin B or, and or folate deficiency. So that wouldn't be shocking, but it's not, it's not bad, it's mild. So these are good. Okay, and then we move on along. And then here we have the electrolytes. So his sodium potassium chloride. 
And then in here we got glucose, we have BUN, urea, creatinine, uh, uric acid. We have a lipid panel, so we have all of the cholesterol, triglycerides, the LDL, HDL, etc. We have all the stuff in a liver panel. Uh, calcium, I don't know, okay, ALP, alkaline phosphatase. And then I have to look this one up. I'm not familiar with this word here. I'm going to guess that might be iron. And then we have magnesium. So that's what's included, and that's what came by. That's what came back today. They also give you the normal ranges, which is great. And um, you have the, if they have them listed, which they do, they have the uh, scientific, international scientific um, range, and then FC. I'm trying to remember what FC stands for. But anyway, the volume, like what, what units of measure are they using? Uh, I have a couple things that are elevated. Nothing to be real concerned about, but could be related to the edema that I have been seeing, specifically BUN and uh, urea. So I'm going to look at these. They're not, they're not really crazy out of range, not at all, but they are on the high end of normal, just slightly over the high end of normal. So... Everything else is good. I was really impressed. My glucose was great. Thank goodness for that. So, yeah. I mean, otherwise, my cholesterol is a little high, but it always has been. I'm doing all right. But I'm very impressed. We walked in, and we said, we want this group of tests right here. 68 bucks, basically. I think that's what the exchange rate is right now. It was 1,200 pesos per person. And we still have to take our urine back tomorrow. So that's included as well, and we'll carry that in there tomorrow morning, and we'll probably have that result by the afternoon. That's pretty impressive. Same day results, pretty much for the price of a copay in the United States, for example. And and now you know we've got we've got our labs. This is good. Now I don't know specifically if you had to get something more specialized, like let's say you needed to get a glycosylated hemoglobin or a hemoglobin A1C, for example, that that is a specific test. Yes, they do offer it. It is on their website, but they don't tell you how much it is. So it's one of those things where you would have to ask them, how much is this test? Same thing with a B12, a folate, any sort of tumor markers, you know, Maybe, maybe you're looking at a CA-119, CA-125, something like that. Thyroid panels, they offer them, but they don't show you their prices online. So you would have to ask them how much they were, but I guarantee you, guys, I guarantee it. It would not be as expensive as you would be getting them in the United States. I mean, I know for a fact that what a CBC costs in the United States. I mean, I've been in the position from a lab IT perspective to see what the charges are that are built for those types of tests with the understanding that they charge what they charge because that's what they want the insurance company to pay, see. And of course, they have contracts with insurance companies to get paid at a lower rate. So they always inflate the rate and then they take what the insurance company says they will pay. But the problem then is, is let's say you don't have insurance and you're paying out of pocket, for example. You might, you might pay a discount, like 40% off or something like that. Basically, you might pay what the insurance company would pay. But, you know, if you have a physical in the United States and you get your annual labs done with your physical, insurance companies typically will include that with your annual preventative care and you won't pay anything. So that, that's true as well. But I'm telling you what, I mean, to walk in and pay around $60, $65, maybe $68, and have all those labs done, it's peace of mind and it's affordable and now it's done. I would know, and I can tell right now, I can see that there's something going on with my BUN and my urea there's something to look at there. But I know that. I know that and I know what is significant because, I, because I've done that for 30 years. This is what I did. I was a lab scientist. I worked in medical labs. Um, I managed labs. This is what I did. So I do understand these things. I'm not a doctor though. 
So if I saw something on there that would have blown my mind, like, whoa, like, wow, that's like double what it should be, then yeah, I would know I need to go consult with a doctor because this isn't right. Slightly over the high end is not something to be concerned about, but it is something to watch. So maybe in another three to six months, I'll go get it done again and see where we are and just keep an eye on it. And if I'm tracking it and it's increasing over time, again, time to go see a professional who knows how to treat those things. And it is the next day and we are making our way back to the laboratory. Because they were working in the lab late one night. <laughs> oh. <laughs> your eyes beheld an eerie sight <laughs> so this is really easy i mean yes it is they they gave us now i i think i mentioned this somewhere else it's not common for them to provide a collection container for you so i was glad that they gave us one because i was looking for old tupperware dishes <laughs> single-use versions exactly yes <laughs> and you know we're, we're walking to the lab and I'm carrying literally a ziploc bag holding two cups of pee like yeah this is normal I'm just carrying pee through the streets of Mexico mm -hmm. suspect when she said oi they probably have your analysis they run right there in the lab on site I'm betting any money they've got something small like a little Clinitech status something like that or maybe they're actually doing them manually and they're reading them by the stick although it's more efficient to use a small little toaster sized machine to do that well hello there uh, Mark and I got our urinalysis results back, and as I expected, Mark is perfectly fine. But there was some issues with mine. Eating too many cashews will make you gain weight, cause you to retain water, make your legs and feet swell up, raise your phosphorus level, and it will raise your protein. Oh yeah. So my higher protein, higher albumin, my higher phosphorus, my swollen legs. Yeah, see, Costco sells this bag of cashews that I really, really like to eat. And I've gone overboard on cashews. I know I have. So I have put the cashews away. They are out of my diet for the next three months. And in about three months, I'll go get retested. We'll see where my albumin is, and we'll see if my phosphorus and everything came down a little bit. I suspect that it will. Now, would I advocate anybody just do this and just be your own doctor? No. The reason I'm doing it is because I have lab background and I understand what these tests are. And I know myself and my medical history with my providers, and I know what they would do. And this is exactly what they would do. They would say, change your diet, change your lifestyle, we're going to retest you in a few months. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut the cashews out, and uh, I'm just going to keep on drinking the water like I do, and I'll go out in about three months and I'll get it retested and see if that you know, BUN and the urea has come down, the phosphorus has come down, and if the albumin has significantly decreased in my urine measurement. 
because that's what I'm most concerned about. I want to make sure that that albumin measurement in my urine comes down.